Hello YouTubers, Jordan Blakey the Little Flush Man here today with another amazing rainbow raw food salad and dressing recipe here. But today we have a little bit extra something, a little extra special. Um, this is specifically going to be a nice parasite cleanse uh, salad here and you'll find out why if you keep on watching. Alright, so first of all we're going to go through some of these ingredients here and uh, this is going to be great for this is an anti-cancer um, if you have cancer this is going to alkalize your body it's going to bring amazing phytonutrients including amazing antioxidants as you know may may or may not know but uh, organic blueberries are a great great source of antioxidants and also have amazing anti-cancerous properties all right um, this is also salad is good for reversing cirrhosis of the liver. It's good for reversing fatty liver disease as well as fibrosis of the liver. And it's good for all kinds of all diseases of all kind of the body. The raw food diet is amazing, but especially this organic, amazing, a wide variety of different fruits and vegetables that are going into this. Now some people know about food combining and may not think this is the best food combining. Well, it's up to the person to decide what they like or don't like for food combining. Every body is different. Um, you don't have to use this exact recipe with all the ingredients. You could substitute some. You could only use half of them. You can add more, this and more. It all depends on what you want and, wh and what you need. So, uh, but I will say this. So the people that are nitty gritty and say about the food combining, don't add fruits, to salads or whatever let's take a look at the bigger picture and let's look at the things you eat on a daily basis or a weekly basis it's not it's, it's less important to say about food combining when you're eating different things that are way more you know of a no-no in the raw food world than just pointing out a few little things like food combining this or that you got to look at the stuff you're eating on a daily basis or once a week or twice a week so let's let's cut to the chase and get rid of all that crap and let's see it for what it is it's raw organic good food it's all going in the body it's all going to get breaking down and nutrients are going to get absorbed into the body so i just want to get that taken care of right away okay so first of all here i'm going to use a glass bowl uh, uh, to me it's really important that i use glass products i don't like using plastic or other products that have any kinds of toxins and stuff. I'm, you know, on the cleansing thing, you're trying to be non-toxic. You're trying to cleanse the body and get rid of toxins. That's kind of the point of cleansing. Okay. So here's a nice big glass bowl here. Next, I'm going to wash all of these ingredients as well. Uh, everything gets washed to be at the highest, most optimal, um, highest quality of the products. So this here is some nice. Um, green or a green black kale all right so I'm going to take a nice few leaves out of that and we will I'll wash this up behind the scenes over here I'm actually using my water filter as well so even the highest quality water that I that I have available here is going in <coughs> to washing all these products so there we got the uh, the black kale washed up next we'll cut that up as well now some people say they can't digest the kale, um, that they need to steam it or lightly steam it. Now that's okay. There's no right or wrong. But what we do know for sure is that is not raw food anymore. As soon as you cook the food or steam it even lightly, it is no longer raw food. Raw food is food that is not heated in any way. All right. So, and for those that say they don't digest kale, I say BS to that. I say BS. I say you are basically just listening to the mass consciousness and what they believe about kale and so and so. In reality, you know, you're going to break it up. You're going to break it down. And if you don't, it acts as a fiber anyways, which is really important for cleansing the colon and pulling out toxins and brooming and sweeping that colon clean. So and I finally chopped the kale up just like that <coughs> and uh, there we go we got the kale next we're gonna do the organic arugula here 
Now this is a nice kind of a spicy, slightly bitter, not really too bitter. And this is amazing, uh, amazing for the liver as well as it provides an amazing taste to your salad. So we're going to use all of these up in this salad as well. And um, these are already pre-washed as well. You can rinse them again, but they wash most of these kinds of things three times. It'll even say right on the uh, lid there. Let's see what this one says here. Triple washed right there. Baby organic baby arugula. So it's even the baby, which means it's you know they're really nice tasting, and uh, and and triple washed. So a great product with triple washed, right? So there we got our arugula, and we got our black kale here. So we're looking good on the greens. Now these greens, that green in there, especially in that black kale, that is loaded with chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is created from the photosynthesis of light, converting the sunlight into energy. And that chlorophyll is also known as the blood of plants, which is much like the hemoglobin of our blood, except it's green. Our blood is red, hemoglobin. The plant's blood is green, chlorophyll. It's very connected to our DNA, our RNA and our DNA, and the evolution of our DNA and our species as well as our blood. All right, so there we go. We got some uh, red onion there. We got this is organic red onion. We're going to chop that up nice. This red is also bringing a nice color of red which is connected to the root chakra, the very located at the base of the spine, all right? So this is this salad has got um, all the colors of the rainbow here. We're going to go through all the colors. And the green is associated to the heart chakra as well. And so we got the root chakra and the heart chakra off to a good start there. Then we got the orange pepper here which is the second chakra known as the sacral or sexual chakra which is connected to our genitals and um, is also associated to reproduction of the species. And um, so we're going to also add the orange. Alright, and you can set your little intention, say your little prayer, intention, whatever you want as you're making your food and setting that intention for your own body as well as as well as the bodies and the and the and the chakras of the planet as well. I'm gonna put in some organic broccoli here. Again, I'm gonna wash it up with my water filtration and that ensures that we get off any kinds of um debris, parasites, uh, or at least it helps anyways. And try to get the nicest quality of everything you can. Alright, chop this baby up. And this is baby, uh, this is baby broccoli, so it's just the really nice shoots, the tops of it, and uh, high quality stuff as well, baby. So there's more heart chakra, going to the opening of the heart chakra of my body and the heart chakra of the earth because I will be the one ingesting this food so especially goes to me the person ingesting it alright and as well because this recipe is going out on YouTube then I'm also saying a little intention that you also open your heart chakra and that you're learning about the chakras and the colors of the food we'll go over that once we're all done I'll lay it out nice and simple how it all connects to nature so next here we got the turmeric, also called turmeric, turmeric, uh, turmeric, you know, different ways of saying it. It's all the same thing. It all means the same thing. Everybody has a different way of saying it. It's all good. All right, so here we go. We're going to grate that one up here. And me, uh, my personal preference on the turmeric as well as the onion and things like that, I like to do it nice and fine grated because this stuff is quite potent and powerful and this also ensures a nice consistency throughout the salad. Now this color is also orange, so also again, orange is associated to the sexual chakra and the reproduction, the reproductive system of the body. And turmeric also um, is has an active ingredient called curcumin. Curcumin is an active anti-cancer agent as well. And the fresh turmeric like this 
is as the highest source of the curcumin as it's fresh and raw. Alright, so this little extra here, you can grate it all in or a little bit of extra. You can go and throw over here in your pot over here. Just don't boil the water too hot to make it as close to raw as possible. Alright, so we're going to throw the extras of it, most of these things in there in our tea as well. So we can have a nice tea. It's going to have the nice turmeric flavor. As you can see, the fresh turmeric like this, turmeric, turmeric, is actually not so much doesn't stain your stain your fingers and stuff. Well, it does a bit, but not too much. Not like the powder. Um, probably because there's a bit of water on there. Um, but in any case, there we got the orange in there, more for the sexual chakra. All right, sacred spirituality can also be. All right, and uh, we're also going to throw in two avocados here. All right. Got two avocados. This one's organic. Now, things about the avocado. This is more one of those fruits that if you're trying to eat organic, you know, but there is no organic store. They don't have organic avocados. If you're out traveling and you're at a store or something, then um, I will say this: any kind of fruit or vegetable that has a hard skin, such as the avocado, generally is not even sprayed anyway, even if it's not organic. When was the last time you seen waxy stuff on um, an avocado, for example? Or when was the ever the time you seen parasites or bugs go through the skin? How about never? Or, or, or at least 99% uh, of the time? I have personally never noticed it. I may have not been actually looking, but that's the thing. With the things with hard skins like that, there no, there's no need to spray. There is no parasites that go through these skins. So in that sense, you can buy non-organic. That just takes consciousness to know what foods you can buy non-organic and, and basically not get the pesticides in them. All right. So next here, we got um, that, that's how we cut it. If you saw me, down the side, down the other way, that gets the nice little squares. Then you just take the spoon and scoop it out and then you got the nice little squares just like that nice little chunks very quick and easy it's actually really fun to do as well so if you've never um, been and never known how to do that with an avocado now you do the last little bits sometimes I just eat those as well and that way you get a little taste of what's to come or if I'm preparing it for somebody else I'll often not take any little bites or anything that way to savor it just for the moment to share the experience together of eating it. Now the little pit here, the little seed pit, avocado pit, I wash it up in the water, make sure you get off all the any avocado part on there. So you wash it up and then all you do with these ones, you just let them sit somewhere like on a table or on a cloth and let them dry and then you can plant these in the springtime alright so I'm doing that with all my fruits and vegetables that I can uh, at least uh, at least over 50 percent of them I save the seeds to plant them in parks in the summer now this is really important this is going to help save the world here this is going to change the world um, if everybody does this if everybody starts saving seeds from their fruits um, and then go and plant them in the park in the springtime then there'll be abundance for all those poor starving people on the streets that are panhandling trying to make a couple bucks and um, you know to go and feed themselves or whatever and uh, you know this is the real food the real food that is really gonna you know make them thrive and, and survive as well so Let's just think of that. Let's think of, I call it, the concept I come up with is the pick and eat park. Pick and eat. Instead of picnic, pick and eat. So you can go to parks all around the world. If they got the pick and eat part in there, then you just go and pick the fruits that grow off the trees. Just like nature provides abundance for everyone. There's water, fruits, and vegetables everywhere you go. And that's the way the world should be. It should be run on free energy. It should not be based on money, a money society of greed and always more, never enough. 
It's never enough when how many cars do you need? How, how many uh, boats, million dollar yachts? When is it going to end? When are we going to finally realize spirit and have enough? And there's abundance for everybody. It's uh, one of my buddies came up with a great poetry quote. He said, Too little have too much at the price of too many. Something like that. Basically, you know, some people have way too much at the price and the expense of people having way too little. And that's just not the way it should be. It should be equal. There should be abundance for everybody. Nobody should be starving. Why are we wasting our money on the military? What's that going to do? What we're, we're trying to defend? What are we defending? What 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 are we doing? What is the whole idea of that? Um, uh, it sounds fear-based to me. Doesn't sound like love. Building weapons, mass destruction. Um, I think the world's on the wrong track with that idea. I'm pretty sure about that. I'm pretty sure that ain't love. I know that much. That building weapons to kill each other and go to war is definitely not love. I'm, I mean, I'm sure at least even the mass consciousness, which are clueless to, to this whole concept of free energy, um, you know, that they would pretty much have to agree that that's not really, uh, definitely not a high form of love. There may be some in there, but uh, let's face it, killing each other and stuff, it doesn't sound like much fun. It doesn't sound like love to me. All right, so then we got the, um, here we got the fennel. All right, so I'm going to take off a nice chunk of the fennel here. And fennel is a great um, antioxidant as well. Look, it's got the green with the chlorophyll. It gives the, the also the um, salad a nice sweet kind of flavor. It's very similar to dill, like in a way, but um, very good for your teeth as well. Helps clean your teeth. All right, made dozens of different kinds of antioxidants. And like I said, nice sweet flavor as well, bringing to the salad here. So both the stalk, the leaves there, if you call them leaves, whatever those are, they're all good as well as this part down here. So we'll chop this all up. And you can grate it as well. Works good. And grating it is probably all I'll do with the rest of it so you can see. We're cutting it. Nice little chunks there. And with the grating I could go with the bigger size on this one. Each person makes the choices that are going to change, make or break this earth and the changes that go with it for the better or the worse, depending on what we choose. So instead of this going to waste here, why should food go to waste when there's people starving? I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. All right, we throw that in there because of a lack of consciousness, basically. People are just thinking about themselves. They're thinking, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. Our society or our our uh, our city we live in, we have abundance. We we can throw away food. You know, it doesn't matter, and it's just accepted. But you know, that 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 just doesn't ring a bell right for me. Anyways, I don't know. Everybody's different, but uh, I believe in saving every last little drop of everything possible, especially with the state of the world and the way it's in. We can't afford. A waste. Just like this, I break this open. Now these seeds, we're going to use them and grow big trees with this. There could be enough food for everybody within 10 years if everybody started doing this. Right there. Saving their seeds and planting the trees. Then there will, we wouldn't need farmers even. You know, they, they wouldn't need to work so hard. Farmers are the, some of the hardest workers out there. And they don't make a lot of money. And they work hard and they feed the people. So let's give them a break. Let's think of the farmers that have helped us over the so many years. Give them a break. Let's grow some of our own food and give back to them. Alright, there's 
The apple, this is an organic Granny Smith apple. Alright, and we'll be saving these seeds later at the end of the video here. Or if I don't have enough time, I'm just telling you what I do do with the seeds. And um, then we got the, um, got nine minutes left on this SD card here. Alright, so then with the onion here. The onion is purple and white inside, alright? So that is amazing. That has to do with the third eye and the crown chakra. Alright, the third eye is the inner vision. Has to do with seeing visions, psychedelic vision, visions of light, like sacred geometry. Um, could be you could be uh, spirits of of power power spirits or power animals, visions of all sorts and all kinds of the third eye, the inner vision. So as we cut this, we're opening up the eye, and look, it even looks like an eye, like that, a sacred eye right there with the middle right inside. So we're opening up the third eye to activate the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. And this also gives it a nice flavor. Uh, somewhat of anti-parasite too as well in the onion. Not too, too much, but pretty good anti-parasitic. It helps, every little bit helps, at least keeps the count down. They might not kill a lot of them, but you know, it takes more potent herbs like black walnut, um, wormwood, and cloves. Now here is the real parasite cleanse too in the raw food world without the herbs and making teas with it. This is the raw food way. You take some, you take all these out. You can put them in a yogurt, but it's best in the, on the empty stomach in the morning. You take the seeds of the papaya and just chew it up really good and set the intention to get those parasites. Now this is very spicy, this stuff, um, these seeds inside. So we're going to put all the seeds in there, spice up this salad here. Uh, this is the main thing why I called it in the beginning of it, anti-parasitic salad. The papaya seeds in there. We're going to put the whole papaya in there as well, the orange part, nice sweet part. Mix all this up. And I just love this. This is great spice. Adds great spice to this salad here. Another thing I do too is I as I take these papaya plants, take out all the seeds, wash them up, and then I dehydrate the seeds and turn them into like little peppercorns. Now these seeds, including the papaya plant, Papaya, pineapple, and persimmons, this persimmon right here, all contain proleolytic enzymes. Now proleolytic enzymes are actually enzymes that break down uh, protein. So if you're eating a big steak dinner or some kind of protein dinner, um, such as steak or other meats like that, then, you know, an alternative to using pepper would be to use these to dehydrate these out of the papaya, they very much taste like pepper once they're dried out and you add that to your steak and you're going to way more digest that steak because what happens to proteins like steak in the intestines is that protein does not break out, break up and break down in the intestines properly and that's why you get um, all kinds of problems with the digestive system as you get older. Um, has to do with the, uh, especially the non-breaking down of the proteins and other fa and fats as well. And so these proleolytic enzymes, as we know, enzymes are really good for the digestive system. And proleolytic enzymes are specifically designed for digesting proteins. All right, and that includes if you're going to be adding seeds and nuts to the salad. That's why adding papaya is you know you gotta cancel out the fact that you know people say don't add fruit to vegetables in proper food combination but you know yeah it's actually you know, it's, it's not just a cut and dry it's not it's not just you know black and white like that there's actually more to it so best to use your intuition on that 
and not be too static about what's right or wrong. Intuitional eating. All right. And you can see how I'm cutting the papaya as well. I go down and I go just light enough so it doesn't break through the skin because the skin is also very soft on the papaya so you can break it you can break right through and then it doesn't scoop out as easy with the spoon whereas the avocado has a really hard skin so it's pretty hard to push the knife through the avocado by accident but if you're unsure put it to the table and cut it otherwise you can cut in your hand right? so then you just take the spoon like this and spoon it all out just like the avocado and I won't, I won't get it all, take my time and get it all because um, I want to make this video as quick as possible and waste, and don't waste time. Alright, so there we go. We got the amazing papaya in there with the papaya seeds, the proleolytic enzymes, and the antiparasitic properties of the seeds. And we're going to put in some purple cabbage. Just like the onion, it's purple and white, crown chakra and third eye chakra for opening the inner vision as well as the illumination of enlightenment of the, uh, the lotus petal crown chakra. So we're getting a nice amount of more purple there. We're getting all the colors of the rainbow in here. So far we got red, orange, green, purple, and white. So we're just missing two colors of the chakra. So we're missing blue, which is the third eye which we will add now. Here it is. The blueberry. The blueberry. We'll add the blueberry, anti-cancerous as well. All these raw foods are anti-cancerous, especially the skins of the blueberry. We got the blue, that's the third eye. Here's the persimmon here. So we got the persimmon. Alright, let's cut that little part off. And right there we had a little a little rotten part that can't got in there we can eat around it of course these are also good for dehydrating and making persimmon chips in the dehydrator but uh, for this salad here what we will do and I save the seeds on the persimmons as well that would be great I've never grown a persimmon tree before so be careful not to cut the seeds they are there's usually three or four seeds in the persimmon and uh, so just cut down the sides and then you can open it up and I'll show you what the seeds look like here alright there's one seed there so it kinda looks like a, a large tick basically you could say it looks like a large tick alright so we'll see how many are in this persimmon Oh, there might be some hiding, but actually I only see one in this one. I've never seen that before. It's a bit different, strange. Alright, looks like there's only one. I mean, unless there's a couple more hiding in there. But we're going to again cut this up, and this gives it a nice sweet flavor. And this, like I said as well, like pineapples, persimmons, and papaya all have the proleolytic enzyme as well as Bro, bro, bromine and papain. Those are other digestive enzymes. These have the highest amounts of digestive enzymes than any other fruit. Alright. Boom, boom. There's probably a couple other fruits that are close to it as well, but these are among the top ones. Um, but we don't have the pine. Alright, folks, here we are. We're back here. Just finished cutting up these persimmons here. Yes, and this persimmon only had one seed, which is very, very rare. They normally have four or three, so that was quite unique. But anyways, these persimmons, like I said, they have the good uh, proleolytic enzymes that help digest protein, especially for the meat eaters out there. All right, and um, I just finished this persimmon up, and this is the orange, again, for the sexual chakra. Um, this the sacred spirituality. 
got the orange and then let's bring now in the lemon that was the last color and this is the power chakra the third chakra and the lemon is very alkaline although it has acids in it once it goes into the body it becomes very alkaline so this is going to go for the dressing we'll make the dressing separate here in this little glass jar so what I typically do is um, I save the seeds and I use because it's organic I also use the skin which has the amazing flavonoids as well as dozens of other antioxidants which are more concentrated than that actually inside the lemon itself so we're going to use the whole lemon here and that these seeds as well we're going to then dry them and this is what I am going to be teaching in all my videos is to save all your seeds very easy to do doesn't take much time and then you can go and plant them either in your backyard or front yard or somebody else's property if you ask them or just in a park which is ideal because the parks have so much space and the concept is the pick and eat park pick and eat I really like the idea like the concept and that is free food for everybody out there fruit grows off the trees free in nature and that's the way nature intended it there was never a price tag to go and pick fruit off of a tree found in nature all right, so we'll save these seeds there. And we're also for the salad dressing, we're going to use some apple cider vinegar. This is non-GMO. This is certified organic with the mother. All right, and this is also very alkaline for the body. It dissolves liver stones, gallstones, and kidney stones. All right, we got the aloe vera juice here. Very cooling for the body heals uh, burns, cuts, wounds of all kinds and also very healing for the intestinal system for proper digestion and the immune system where over 80% is located in the intestines and we got uh, Bragg's here, liquid soy, amino acids this is the amino acids are the building blocks of life this is non-GMO gluten free as well and the Bragg's in there give it a salty flavor we got some mushrooms to add now. These ones I have never uh, seen or got before. I got them in Chinatown. They're called shumaji, shimaji mushrooms. These are the brown shimaji. They have the white and brown. Browns are usually uh, of all this typically more nutrient rich. Now there's a there's a myth out there that mushrooms don't have a lot of nutrients, and I don't believe that for one second. Mushrooms have some of the most powerful nutrients out there may not be the normal kinds of nutrients such as vitamins and minerals but they contain other kinds of nutrients that are less known all right so we're going to cut all of these up and um I got another mushroom here. Let me just back this up. We got the king oyster mushroom. All right, now the energy of the king oyster mushroom here is I want to tell you about the oyster mushroom. The oyster mushroom has been been being used on the planet to clean up oil spills. What they do is they plant the oyster mushroom in the sands where oil spills happen on the beach and the and the mushrooms are able to ingest the oil, actually ingest it right into the mushroom and transmute it into usable clean energy as even edible. Now yes there are some toxins in there because it was just grown right from um, a lot of um, uh, oil but at the same time it transmutes it just like seaweeds clean the oceans and don't take on much of the radioactive waste or oil or whatever gas or any other pollutions in there but instead act like act to make the body transmuters of that radioactive or waste material as well and that helps heal and clean the planet so although there are some toxins the energy is a healing energy which transmutes those toxins and makes them into usable clean energy which allows our bodies to work to help heal the planet of those 
levels of toxins and pollution. So we've got the oyster mushroom. Now all we have left here is to make the, the, the dressing here. So, so far we have, what do we got, the lemon here. The lemon and Bragg's and uh, we got aloe vera gel and apple cider vinegar. We're going to put in some castor oil here, some castor oil. It's amazing healing properties as well. And we're going to put in some raw organic tahini as well. Give it some nice more protein. All fruits and vegetables have protein and um, they have a, enough protein. But if you want to add more protein to your diet, if you're weightlifting or working out, you can use seeds and nuts, and you can also sprout them, which is ideal. We're going to add some spirulina as well, the blue-green algae, organic spirulina. It's got all the nutrients, all the vitamins and minerals. Almost every single one is in the spirulina. Very packed and concentrated. And we're going to put in some solar salts ancient solar salts. We got the Himalayan sun-dried sea salt. We got the Atlantic sea salt here. We got some, um, what else do we got here? We got uh, um, Dead Sea, the Dead Sea as well. So we got three kinds of solar salts, ancient solar salts deposited over two million years ago on the planet. If you're worried about protein still, for those of you that think we need more protein, if you f find the studies out there, we need less and less protein. Scientists, even in the mainstream, are agreeing that we need less protein than we once thought we needed so many grams per day that we actually don't. If you look at the gorilla, the, one of the largest mammals on the planet, well, I mean, the, the, the land-bearing mammals, they get uh, nearly three grams of protein a day. It's very, very minimal, hardly any. And look how big and strong they are. So protein, um, is not just the end-all be-all for bodybuilding, gaining weight, or whatever. I'm going to put in some honey as well. Mm, nice honey here. Wild, wild, what's it called? Uh, wild flower here. I'm going to put in some organic spectrum olive oil here. Cold-pressed organic. Give the nice, good oils, lubricate the brain, good for the heart, all the organs, and uh, let's see, we got some kelp here, the kelp powder that I dry the kelp, maca powder right here, a superfood.